What's up guys? So in this video, I wanna show you how to set up some basic caching on your CI build so that you can save a little bit of time if you're running a bunch of jobs and things. We're looking at a GitLab CI YAML here and I have it plugged into GitHub. So this is a repository that is on GitHub, but it uses a GitLab CI, which is a pretty cool feature. Even though I'm using GitLab CI instead of like GitHub Actions or Travis or something like that, CI caching is a very basic feature and pretty much all CI platforms are going to have it. So the same ideas here, like the, the cache and path and stuff like that is going to apply to pretty much every CI platform. It's just going to be implemented a little bit differently. Now a cache in this context is a file or a set of files that a CI job saves for a subsequent job so that it doesn't need to be downloaded or generated again. So it saves a little bit of time and it also saves some CPU cycles because grabbing dependencies or generating files is a pretty computationally intensive task. So caches and things are generally used for language package managers. So like uh, NPM, uh, Bundler for Ruby and uh, Pippi and V or just pip for Python. You can cache pretty much anything, but for these examples, I'm using the actual package manager cache. You can also store build artifacts and you could cache them, but there are different ways of doing that and I'm not gonna cover it here. So yeah, for this example, uh, we're looking at a GitLab CI file. Uh, it's got three different CI jobs, build Ember, build Jekyll, build Nicola. And if we hop over to GitLab CI, we can see that those correlate with these names here. And we can go up a level with uh, GitLab CI, look at pipelines. We can see that each pipeline is a collection of those CI jobs and each pipeline has these different stages. So that's just kind of general uh, CI pipeline stuff, but we're talking about caching, which is this bit here. So at the top of the CI definition, I've got this variables block. We've got work on home and pippy and vcacheter. This is basically telling uh, v and v -E -V to store all of the virtual environments here so that we can cache them if we need to. I don't think I'm actually, no, I am caching them, okay. So we're caching the VE and V so we don't have to generate them each time. And we're also telling pip E and V to store its cache in the same location so that we grab it with a single key. You can see that each job has its own cache bit and it's pointing at its own directory. You could also put the cache on the top. So like if you wanted to just go ahead and cache everything, you could grab one of the caches and then just say, for all of the jobs, I want to cache all of these locations, and it will, but that also means it's going to download each of these for each job. And Ember doesn't care about what Jekyll has, and Nicola doesn't care what Ember has, so this, this will work, but it's not the most efficient design. So with GitLab CI, and with any CI platform, I'm sure it's really easy just to nest these caches in the job steps. So that's what we've done here. Now you can just as easily run a CI without caching. And I've got a branch for that. It makes it look uh, simpler. There's less going on, but this means that each job will download all node packages or, or all gems or all pip packages for every run, every single time. And if you just have a CI that runs once a week, maybe it's not that big of a deal, but if you have jobs that run all the time and maybe they're slow, you want to speed them up. That's where caching comes in. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to implement. Now this file and all of these projects are available on GitHub under my CI caching repo. This is just kind of an example for people if you wanna see how it all works. It's just the exact same stuff that I, I showed you in VS Code. Uh, we've got our variables on the top, and we've got our paths and things. So this GitHub repo is mirrored on GitLab so that I can take advantage of GitLab CI, which I absolutely love. So I wanna show you the impact using a cache has on a job runtime. Looking at the code, I've added times to npm install, bundle install, and uh, pippy and vsync. So we can see exactly how much time is spent on these operations. So you can kinda of see the impact of the cache in the build duration. I'm using different branches, main is the one with caching, and then a branch called no caching uh, has the caching disabled. And if you look at Nicola, Without cache, it's four and a half minutes, but with cache, it's a minute and 13 seconds. So pip is kind of a interesting package manager. It can be kind of slow, especially when it has to figure out tons and tons of dependencies. If we look at something like Jekyll, which is Ruby, we have two and a half minutes, but with a cache, we have two and a half minutes. So how could that be? So let's pop open this and this and compare those times that I added. So this is the branch with caching and the user time is one minute and 30 seconds. 
and without the cache it is 1 minute and 30 seconds. So adding a cache won't always increase your build times. It depends mostly on the language but also the files you're caching. Because remember if you're downloading, if you're having to cache a ton of files, you're having to download a ton of files and that can slow things down too. Of course there's ways to mitigate that. So let's take a look at Nicola and see how much time we saved there. So with caching we've got three minutes or wait no that is what three seconds and then without caching it is three minutes so that is quite a big difference just from caching so you can see right here it's creating the virtual environment and it's having to install the dependencies but right here it just installed them and then bam it's done because everything was already there so yeah, that's an example of caching in action. Uh, it's not a silver bullet, it won't speed up all of your builds. Depends largely on the language and the types of files and the number of files you're wanting to cache. But it's very easy to implement, even if you really only run CI once a week, why not? It's just three lines, as long as you know what you're trying to cache, it's very easy. But that's about it, so. I hope that you liked this video and I'd like to do more videos like this one. I'm still kind of trying to figure out how to make these videos and keep them interesting for you. This kind of information is pretty dry. There's nothing really to show except for code and like websites and stuff, but I hope that it was useful and interesting to you. If you want to see the, this code, uh, the GitLab YAML is really the only thing I wrote. These are just bootstrap projects that I'm using for examples, so they're not, these aren't particularly interesting. Um, if you want to use this repository, just go here and uh, take a look in the GitLab CI and uh, take the pieces that you like and use them in your own projects. I used GitLab CI here, but uh, Travis CI is very similar. Uh, it's uh, Git host platform agnostic, so you could use it with anything if you're using Bitbucket or whatever else is out there it plugs right in uh, gitlab ci does too circle ci is good github actions is uh, fine um, kind of does its own thing i prefer travis and gitlab but yeah i think that's all i'm going to say for this video try to keep it short i hope it was helpful and um, let me know if you use caching and, and what you think of it i appreciate all your support and thanks for watching